Hi there, and welcome to this program about polyamory and narcissism. This program will help you understand narcissism in a bit more detail and how it can impact on relationships. So this Facebook friend asked me recently, do you think there is any correlation between polyamory and narcissism? And this is a topic I have actually thought about before. And I know a fair bit about narcissism. I've read lots of books on it. Uh, and I've had close personal experience with uh, narcissistic personalities. So that, along with my knowledge of polyamory, makes me, I think, somebody who has a fair bit to share about these topics. And I think you'll find what I have to say very interesting. So my sort of gut reaction to this question is to say, actually, no. I don't think there is a strong correlation between narcissism and polyamory. And I say this for a number of reasons. First of all, it's been my observation that the people who have narcissistic personalities that I've been aware of are simply not into polyamory. Now, of course, that's just an anecdote, um, but nevertheless, it's the kind of evidence that we have available. There's not a lot of study done on uh, polyamorous people so it's it's kind of a fresh topic and also when i've been around polyamorous people uh, they don't really strike me as having the characteristics of a narcissistic personality so i'm just not seeing the evidence on the ground and i think on top of that if we look at what qualifies people to be uh, narcissistic personalities it's pretty extreme stuff. The crux of it is that people with narcissistic personality disorder have a grandiose sense of self-importance. And a person with a sort of grandiose sense of self is not going to be able to comprehend why their intimate partner would want to go and see somebody else. It just doesn't make sense to them. And also, they're going to find that challenging and it will probably lead to a lot of stress and problems in the relationship. And on the other side of things, uh, people with these kind of personalities are just not going to fit into the polyamorous community. Polyamorous people are generally seem to be quite humble and friendly and open um, and certainly not uh, having some kind of grandiose uh, sense of high achievement. So that just all of that stuff just doesn't fit together properly and the other thing is that polyamory is or at least theoretically based around the idea of having many uh, people who you share an intimate love life with and kind of as a sort of axiomatic thing a narcissist's lack of empathy and inability to appreciate others makes them really quite unable to love others so, for all the reasons I've just given, I'm going to conclude that there's probably little chance of bumping into somebody with narcissistic personality disorder in the polyamory community. They just don't go together. But hey, don't go away yet. In part two, I'm going to discuss something which, well, kind of complicates matters. So just what could complicate things? In Ross Rosenberg's excellent book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, he presents the continuum of self theory. And according to this theory, narcissism is actually on a scale of one to five, with four and five being the pathological narcissism that I discussed in part one, and one and two being sort of just ambitious, and goal seeking but you know in a fairly healthy way and still have really functional relationships so one and two on the scale are just people that are self-focused but really not in any way narcissistic and between them and the fours and fives who have narcissistic personality disorder is three and ross rosenberg refers to the three as a benign or mild narcissist and people with this kind of personality are quite well able to function and sustain healthy relationships. However, they do tend to be a bit self-centred and self-obsessed. 
and this can be annoying and quite challenging and they tend to be people who you might call high maintenance but unlike the pathological narcissist these people are not emotionally abusive or highly manipulative so they're not really dangerous people to be around they're just challenging and these challenges would be around behaviors that would be more associated with the pathological narcissist and those challenges might also be very destructive or damaging to the relationship but not in the harmful and abusive way of the pathological narcissist so what if anything has this got to do with polyamory well one of the traits of the narcissistic personality is this ambitious goal-seeking behavior and desire to stand out from the crowd and one way of standing out from the crowd and looking better or different to everyone else is to engage in fringe activities. And of course, polyamory is very much one of those kinds of fringe activities. So polyamory can be seen as an opportunity for people to stand out from the crowd and to make themselves look better or more functional emotionally than everybody else, but in a hip new age way that looks coolly egalitarian. And this really is a honeypot for the benign or mild narcissist. And just to be quite clear, I'm not saying that all polyamorists are benign narcissists, but I am saying there probably is a raised probability of bumping into these kinds of people in the polyamory community. And there's nothing exceptional about this. You will find the same kind of thing happening, perhaps around unusual religious groups or unusual dietary practices or fitness and health and so forth and so that's it for this program and if you do want to dig more into this whole topic of the relationship dynamic between the codependent and the narcissistic uh, have a look at Ross Rosenberg's book it's excellent it's one of the best books I've read on this topic and I highly recommend it thanks for listening and please do like and share this program I'm sure other people will find it interesting.